<laughs> All right. Um, greetings and welcome to Mary Claire Lawson, who is going to be talking to me today as part of my series of conversations on the art of online learning. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Leah Stiepel and I run a business called Crosscut Studio, which helps all kinds of people and businesses and organizations create educational experiences and digital education projects and really hones into um, a person or a business's unique mission and goals and helps determine what the, what the best shape is for that offering. So um, I'm meeting with Mary Claire because she's like a super creative, very well-rounded, eclectic, talented person who has a bunch of ideas. Uh, and I thought this would be a fun conversation to sort of try to take all of the possibilities and, and nudge us towards one or maybe two to consider and start to start to imagine what that might look like. Um, so Mary Claire, I'll let you uh, introduce yourselves and say self, self, self. <laughs> how many, how many, of, there's many only one, selves. it's only one Mary Claire. Um, yeah, what do you do and what are you doing now? Well, um, thank you for that introduction and this is so exciting because <laughs> that's exactly what I want to do is kind of meld <laughs> meld all these different interests and creativity and um, ideas into something something substantial and something with a purpose. Um, I, I do have a, a day job, a career <laughs> in television. So um, what, my, is, what is your job in television? At the moment? I'm in um, branding and marketing okay. and um, I've been in entertainment branding uh, and marketing in what's known as um, brand creative for um, almost my entire career and I've worked with um, pretty much every television network uh, that you could think of NBC ABC CBS Disney all uh, the letters yeah. <laughs> every acronym there is yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, I love it I love working in television and I'm getting to express myself creatively that way but I also have this other side of me where I am a painter mm. and um, a creative person, a craft maker, and um, I come from a family of artists, and uh, I've always, my entire life, been a painter, and uh, making crafts, and doing art, and painting murals, yeah. and it's never not been a part of who I am, and now that I've moved to a house, which is recent, <laughs> it's in February. Congratulations. Uh, Thank you. I finally have the chance to paint murals that I don't have to paint over. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because my whole life I've lived in apartments in New York. Yeah. And I've, that has not stopped me from painting murals because yeah. every apartment I had in, whether it be in Queens or Brooklyn or um, Manhattan or wherever it was, I would paint murals on all the walls. Or, or a hand-painted wallpaper and then when the lease was up I would paint everything white oh, or I would enlist like my sister to come help me paint everything white yeah. and, um, how did that feel it was at first it was a little heartbreaking because yeah. I was like wow I spent so much time painting these designs yeah. and yeah I can't believe I have to paint this white wouldn't someone just want it better this way yeah after like this the second or third time doing it, I was like, you know, that this isn't precious. Like this art isn't precious. It's, yeah. it's, a like burning man. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like I could just do this again. Right. It's it's here for the time. It's here. It's here to delight me and my guests. Yeah. And then, for the next person comes in and they want white walls or they want to do what they want to do in the apartment. It's not my apartment anymore. Right. So I, I need to make it clean and beautiful for them. Yeah. And I can go to my next place and paint whatever I want. It's an opportunity to do something new. Right. And so um, now that I, it's funny because now that I'm in a house, I find that I like keep repainting certain walls. Ah. <laughs> like I'm doing a staircase. Cause you got used to like painting something and then painting over yeah. Like right. I do it one way and then I'm like, oh, actually I actually want to do it another way. And then I just repaint it. Wow. Uh, I'd love to, when, when I uh, eventually post this conversation, maybe you can send me some photos of your work in your apartment. Oh yeah, definitely. Or your house, excuse me. Yes, yes. Yeah. So is that your main um, artistic 
uh, our outletters that how it ends up usually is murals and you know wall painting yeah i mean i think in the past i've done smaller works um I did some small works for a show and for on commission and I I do crafts like I'm really really into ornaments like for the holidays like making Oh, I see a good workshop coming up. I'm like workshop. intricate my mm. my sisters and my mother and I we make these really intricate um little dioramas out of eggs. Oh wow. So I mean I and I love 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 decorating. So it's like wow. anything with glitter and like really wild. Yeah. And I will just make like tons and tons. But when it comes to like really getting into the zone mm -hmm. and like um, painting and um, I just always go big. Yeah. I, I try to start small and it's kind of like I have this wall over here where I try to do like a, sm a small little um, framed piece on the wall. And then I just started, I just went and did like 20, pieces all over the wall so it <laughs> ended to like a collage right right interesting and so when you say there's there's mural painting or wall painting and then you said something about hand painted wallpaper what's yeah, the difference like, well to me a mural is is like a big scene it, right it's a story so right. i'm thinking about this one apartment i had in williamsburg where i did horses so it was mm -hmm. like that was a mural to me it was horses on the wall and they were they were going somewhere or a story to tell but then there's like something like this where okay starting and this to me is wallpaper because right. it, it's not really a pattern but it's flowers and it's right. shape and i'm gonna try to duplicate it like on the rest of the wall it's not there's no narrative attached to it no. yeah mean, yeah maybe there is but not right. really so there's nothing papery about hand painted wallpaper not to me, no. Right. Okay. I, guess, I guess I could, like, I have in the past um, gotten a huge canvas. Like, for one of my walls, when I lived on Lori's side, I got the, I wasn't allowed to paint on the wall. So I got this huge mm. canvas the size of the wall. <laughs> my nephew's <laughs> helped me paint like a huge mural on the wall. And wow. then I carry that with me. I still have it. That, I, have I mean, it. that's brilliant. <laughs> but that could be, like, if someone doesn't on a paint on the walls. Right, right, right. I see what you mean. Big paper or something. Yeah. Okay. And so how do you usually work? You say I said I said to you, I've moved into this farmhouse, which at the moment I have. Um, I'm in my office. Um, I'd like to have something uh, like a hand painted mirror on the wall. How what would your process be of working with the client? Yeah, like that's exactly it. That's what I that's what I'm thinking. So especially for when you're always on zoom. Right. I mean, it, let me stop you though. Before you tell me on zoom, what would you do before the pandemic? And when you okay. would go to someone's house, what would, what's your actual approach to working with a client? So and I have done this in the past. I have like, there's a few times I was commissioned to do murals in people's homes. Mm -hmm. um, and what I would do is I just would talk with them about what they were looking for, what they wanted. But a lot of times they just don't know because right. it's, it's very hard when you're in your own home yeah. to even fathom something like this on your walls. Right. <laughs> because, I mean, I know there's like a lot of wallpaper out there, but to even begin to like tell a story with your own room, right. how does someone even do that? So. Right. There's a lot of conversations that need to be had and some exercises, I feel like, hmm. like creative exercises to get to know what your inspiration is and what hmm. you want to do in that room and how you hmm. want it to make you feel like if it's your office, it's you want your office to be a calming space and a joyful right, right. space, right. usually because you're at work it can be a very stressful place or it can be a place where you're doing a lot of hard thinking. Yeah. So you want it to be a place that exudes calm and, mm -hmm. and a nice energy in there. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a lot of conversation about what, what are the, what kind of memories bring up um, those feelings for you? What kind of places, what kind of things, you know? Exactly. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. So you're sort of trying to get at the mood and the energy that you want to live in, in that particular space before you go about thinking about design and color and so forth. Oh yeah, and it's so like, personal. 
Right. It's so interesting. So many different crafts and, you know, client work has the same theme to it. It's really like designing backwards. Like where do you, where do you want to be in the end and how do you work backwards? But each particular process in art has its own way of going about this process. And I, I feel like it yeah, must be with interior design or with the kind of work you're doing. You really have to think about, you know, when I step into my office or my bedroom or my bathroom or my kid's bedroom, you know, like how does whoever lives in that room or spends a lot of time in that room really want to feel? Um, and so just to think a little bit about, beginning to think about what this would mean online. Um, is there any part of this work? So, so currently you talk to someone, you go through this process, you give them whatever sort of creative activities they need in order to kind of get you both to the point at which you feel comfortable proposing some designs. And then you paint it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the pandemic, and if you were to do this all digitally, do you think, is your initial instinct that a client that's, kind of studying with you online or working with you online in some way would be the ultimate painter of their own mural? Or do you think you could, for example, create a um, create something for them that they could project on the wall um, and then they could do the outlines and the, you know, something simil simple that required them to kind of use your design but they could paint it? Or would you like to be them to have them be the creators of their own design? I find it both ways. I mean, deep down, I want them to paint it. Yeah. Because I feel like it's so satisfying. Right. If you're the artist and it's your story and it, you can say, I made that. Yeah. And, and you walk into a room and it's your, it's your wall, it's your art. And it, it, maybe you'd never thought of yourself as an artist. Yeah. And I mean, everyone's an artist and everyone has creativity, but you just mm -hmm. never, some people just don't tap into it because of many reasons. But right. if you painted it yourself, it's just, it's way better than if you right. took something I did. It's like, no, you create it. Right, right, right. So your ideal would be to have, you would be a support along the way in designing the painted wallpaper or the mural. And then they would what would they what would they do they would even they would they would draw the entire thing and paint the entire thing or how could you support that process for someone who hasn't spent much time painting in their life so i was thinking um we could develop colors together so mm -hmm. develop like the color story yeah so let's just say it's going to be one wall so let's, let's just say it's going to be something like this like a, like an accent right. wall. Mm -hmm. develop the colors like mm -hmm. maybe just do two colors if, yeah. or, or many color. Maybe they're going to do a whole painting. Who knows? But um, we develop that together. And then um, maybe there would be some kind of stencil um, part of it just to get them started. Like I could send them a stencil, right. of, let's say a, a little flower or something just to like uh, dip the toe in the water Yeah, and, and get the feeling of like, using the brush or, or putting like just the act of putting paint on a wall mm -hmm. that's not but you're gonna just paint is yeah. is very risk it's it's a it's fearful like when yeah you're, yeah so i think like right, it's like you're I, not supposed to do it or something yeah. yeah um and yeah just like guiding very slow baby steps mm -hmm. create something really beautiful that's that's more advanced than um, like a DIY paintbrush. Right, right, tutorial. okay, right. Like, so you're really interested in the person that you're working with or the learner, if it's an online course, having not only ending up with wallpaper that they like, but also having the joy of and, and excitement of going through a creative journey with this process. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And do you think, um, I mean, I'm trying to get at what, what kinds of ways you like to work because I find that usually works better for whatever kind of educational product ends up existing because you have to like it too if you're facilitating it. Do you prefer to work with people one-on-one -on -one through this or could you imagine like a small group working on this online together? Each person could be working on their own, kind of showing what they're doing to each other and you could be a facilitator and a guide in that or do you think you would like 
even bigger audience. Like you're not even sure who's listening, but you are giving out, a, you know, you're leading people through a process and you may never really see the details of what they do, but they're receiving what you do and kind of what you say and kind of doing their own work on their own time. That's a good question because all three of those options sound okay to me in yeah. different ways. Like I like the idea of one-on-one -on -one because I, I love meeting people and building relationships. Yeah. I like a small group because then they can work off each other and share their work and have, right. but then also a big group is, is fun also because then a community forms. Right. And I love that idea because yeah. especially now, I know it's so well, and to point out, you could easily have this small group be part of a larger community and you could have the one on ones be part of a larger virtual community as well. Like even though you'd be working with them one on one or in a small group, you could have each thing they post exist in a virtual space that's for a lot of people, um, but they would get more one on one attention and you, you know, in return might charge more than you did for say like I mean, one, one option could be you create a YouTube channel and a series and put on it a series of videos that walks people through this process and maybe, you know, sends people to a website where there are a few additional materials and then you make money off of ads or something. That's more of, that's less of a course and sort of like an educational offering and more of a, um, you know, sort of a free offering that lets people know about you. Maybe they end up wanting to work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe when the pandemic's over, they pay you really well to come and do a beautiful mural in their house. But it's more like you putting out your work and having a lot of people access it. But not, you know, they may or may not actually do it. They may not finish it. They may not take it on. If you have a small group, and small group I would say is anything under 12, for example, um, could be a little bit more, but you know, you, you want few enough people that they, they sort of feel an intimacy and a sense of, they can develop a sense of trust. Courses that are, um, and I'm going to say course, even though you could call it workshop or you could call it a lot of things. I'll just say, say the word course cause it's easy, but, um, small courses or sorry, small cohorts that tend to run that have like an actual beginning and an end date. Like say you said this process will take, um, a month um, from us first determining, you know, how you want to feel in this room, what the in visual ingredients of this room are, what you really need this room to be, all the way to the design, maybe not the, even the doing of the mural. Although if you included that, maybe you say a month and a half, so a six week course. And then you have a group of 12 and maybe you either meet each week live or not, if you want to have, make sure that it can span all the, um, time zones of the world so you can post a video but then have required like assignments in which people upload photos and images of could be images of their writing or text or um, pictures of the room they're working on um, or pictures of things that inspire them or pinterest boards or whatever and you could share those each week according to a due date and then ask other people to look at those and give feedback and their thoughts and encouragement and then the next week could be the next step in the process and they could share something that, um, you know, is a result of their work that week on the part of the process that you've outlined. These courses tend to produce more results for people because deadlines, as you know, the trope goes, make magic happen. So without deadlines, we often don't prioritize. So a deadline is just sort of an impetus to prioritize something. And a community ups that a sense of accountability because you know that other people are going to see if you don't do it, you're seeing what other people are doing. So there's accountability and inspiration. So basically you could have, I have no, I'm just making these weeks up, but you could think about what are the, you know, what are the steps? Maybe there's three main steps. Maybe there's six main steps. And maybe there's a week for each of those steps. A week is a good amount of time that everyone understands and can relate to. And then think about like what step could be done on, on, a, on a student's own time and what product could be connected to that step that could be shown and shared. And furthermore, what interaction would be encouraging or useful for that learner, person, client who uploaded their ideas? Like maybe um, they uploaded a color story, as you said, and 
think about, you know, what could peers, what kind of feedback or input could peers give that would be helpful, or is it just encouragement, right? And, and as a corollary, what kind of feedback could you give, you know, and like as a person who actually understands color in a different kind of more expert way? Um, and you might say like, you know, this is really, this what you might make this less dense or this more opaque or something. Um, so that they, they finish a, uh, an assignment, they receive feedback on it, they have a little chance to make it better, and then they go on to the next step until before they know it, they have their own design that they're going to paint on their wall, their own color story. You might also include what um, materials to buy, how to prepare for the actual painting of it, um, what uh, if they need human help around, <laughs> like what that might be, if they should recruit someone, all of these things that go into actually making this thing happen. And of course, you could do this one on one as well. But I do think as we're talking that there could be a really nice element of a small group course that runs maybe, maybe it runs for a month, you take a month off, you run it again, you, you recruit for a month, you run it, recruit, run, you know, you could run it a few times a year and figure out a pricing system that works for you. Yeah. What are, you, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Or how does that, does that appeal to you? Or is there anything about that you're like, well, I don't know if that would work or if I would even really enjoy that? I mean, that sounds great. That sounds, that sounds right. Mm -hmm. I like the um, one month on, one month off um, yeah. because it does sound uh, intense to yeah. prepare and, uh, I mean, just going into it, I'm sure I would get into a rhythm. Um, right but it also sounds really rewarding. And I like that. Mm -hmm. It sounds, yeah. um, and that's, that's exactly why I want to do this. Right. It sounds like you want a, like an actual emotional and creative experience for the person. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rather than like, it's yeah. because I've, I've started painting and I just because I was encouraged started posting it on Instagram and, mm -hmm. um, I'm getting feedback from people saying like, oh, I want you to come paint my house or. Yeah, I want you to come paint my house. I don't even have a house. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm following your house. And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't even know that. I haven't talked to you in forever. And it's so nice to connect. Yeah. yeah. That's what I want to make more of. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, for you, a person that has a full-time job, the questions would be, you know, how much time can I commit to this um, comfortably so that it's not driving me crazy? And maybe you don't run it every other month. Maybe you run it every third month because you also are going to have to find the people that want to take this. And then, and then charge enough that it feels like it's really worth your time because that does come into play, even if you're doing it partly because it's rewarding. You, once you realize, like, I've got to check in with these people and give feedback and connect and, you know, you also want to feel like you're really, um, your time is really valued. Um, but there is that choice of, do I want that much interaction and therefore probably that much reward? Or do I really not have time for that? And do I want to put up a course that is me kind of going through the same process, but not interacting with the people that take this course in the same way? So people can you know, go through this in a self-paced kind of way. I may never know if they make something or not, but maybe they will. And maybe it'll be a, a wonderful experience and they'll send me an email about it, but it's not the same level of intensity. Um, that could be that it fits your schedule and your needs as well. Those courses tend to be like, if you, if you see a course like that on something like Udemy or these websites that have a lot of different courses that are maybe arts related, crafts related, do doer related, you know, a DIY, those tend to be lower priced because they're not, you know, people will pay for the um, interaction with the expert because really we usually learn better that way or most people learn better that way and people kind of know it and people also kind of want this accountability if they actually want to do something because on a gut level we also often know that if somebody's not going to check to see that we did it at the end, we might just deprioritize it. So we'll pay for someone to make us prior prioritize it if we really want this experience. Totally. 
It makes yeah. perfect sense. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and from, uh, and, you know, just to switch this from your perspective to the, to the learner's perspective, imagine yourself now as someone like who you might have worked with previously, maybe like a, like a target client that might be interested in a course like this. It, what do you think about this course as we've sort of sketched it out so far would work for them or not work for them? Like, there's, do you feel like they could actually do it? Or is there some point where you're, you think, oh, maybe they would get stuck there and this, this format wouldn't actually work or they won't like it or? I, I really think um, having me <laughs> as the yeah. teacher showing the steps yeah. and the community, the small group encouraging and being there um, is very important. I yeah. think the, the user doing it on their own, it doesn't work in this case because this is a very, this is like something that people don't usually do. They don't usually paint on their walls. Right. Uh, so cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I know people do DIYs, but to come up with your own intricate design and then paint it, right. it's just, I, I think, it's hard for me to know, but I think people would think, oh, that's really complicated. I couldn't do that. Right. I wouldn't even know where to start. Right. And yeah. I would like to show them, like, it's really not that complicated. You could do this. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I um, I would love to see how this goes. Like, I I'm a I'm someone who has some natural drawing and painting ability, and have studied it enough that I feel like I could see my way to making a mural not as beautiful as yours, but something that I basically liked. But like, say if someone had a a similar process of singing, I'd be like, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't think you understand what we're dealing with here. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, I am not ever going to get on stage and sing a song. And so, but, but you would attract the people maybe more like me who are more inclined towards the visual arts. And um, yeah, it would, just, it would be interesting to see the group of people that you would get. And as a teacher, then you would need to work with those, um, that range of ability that is popping up in your course. Yeah. And it's, it's I always think of my one sister who, thinks she doesn't have artistic ability hmm. but then I see things she makes and yeah. she does and she's a terrific artist and she yeah. has ability she has artistic sensibility like crazy that's really interesting it's just in her mind that she doesn't have it right are you saying I'm probably a really good singer <laughs> yes. yeah I'm gonna send you something after. I'm gonna send you an audio ask <laughs> No, but I know what you mean. It's like sometimes we have trouble seeing the basic kind of abilities that we have. Um, I have another idea that I just want to say while we're talking, which is that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm getting over a cold. Um, when you first mentioned that, so your main kind of artistic expression is these um, uh, wall paintings of various kinds, but that you also love arts and crafts of other kinds. There, an idea popped up for me given that Christmas is coming and Hanukkah is coming, um, you know, holiday season is approaching and people are at home and like, you know, this has been the year of working on your home if you have a stable home, which not everybody does right now, but um, it's a time when people really are investing in this. And so it might be a time when people are, are, would really enjoy some of what you have to offer in a much lower key way. Because I think what you're talking about with the wallpaper uh, or the, the wall mural, whatever, I have so many words for this, painting <laughs> on the walls, that would take a little more time to construct and design and kind of figure out the ins and outs of the facilitation. But it occurs to me that a way to start to get people to pay attention to what you're doing and, and to let people know that you're about to start offering things would be to do kind of a simple, um, I hate the word webinar because it makes me like really bored even just saying it, but something like that, where it's you and maybe a group of people and you take an hour and kind of help people through a process of like a workshop, like of making these ornaments that you talked about. Right. Um, and it could be good practice for you to see what works for you. And you could figure out maybe some community components, like maybe if it's on Zoom, you could have a few 
times when different students show what they're working on and you could you could start to show show your skills in like giving a little bit of advice to make it better or commenting on the colors and the shapes and the and the scene that they're creating and you know you could you could have people sign up and it could be really cheap um it could even be free but you, there could be like a materials list that people have to get ready and so everybody would be set up and they might commit to this workshopping time and they could have multiple people on the call. So like a family could do it or a parent could do it with a few kids. I mean, I would love to do this. I'll be the first one to sign up. <laughs> this sounds fun. And then, and then, yeah, it would be practice for you. It would be lower stakes. And I think it would also go, cause you already have some, you know, people following your Instagram. It would let people know that you sort of transitioning from only doing kind of in-person work or working in your own home to starting to take on this new role of being like a teacher and a guide and an expert in a new way. I love it. That sounds so fun. It sounds really fun, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I'm going to do this anyways with my sisters. I mean, right. Gonna- oh, and that would be so cool to have them with you. Yeah. I mean, this is like, right. we do it every year. Now we're going to do it over Zoom because right. of the pandemic. And um, it's oh. so fun. It's so fun. That would be that would be really fun. This is a great idea, Leah. I'd love. I'm gonna do this. That sounds great. Yeah. And then you could even think. I mean, I'm just putting stuff out there. This is all probably too much to do all of it, but you could think about other things. Maybe family traditions that, because you have this family of artists, things that your family has really enjoyed. And this might be something you do throughout the year. So maybe um, I assume do you celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Do you also celebrate like Easter or something? No. Yeah. Okay, so, so I don't know, anything maybe holiday related or season related that pops up in your mind as, as a project that everyone always enjoys. And then that could be a way that you continue to engage clients for free um, and just have something to put out there that's free or $5 or just not $5 might be too low, but something that's really not a big cost for people and that's very appealing. Right. And then once people trust you and see that you're really friendly and smart and accessible and you know what you're doing, then it's a little more likely that they'll sign up for the thing that's a bit higher cost. Right. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, is there anything else? We only have, you know, have a few more minutes, but is there anything else that you would want to offer or like, is there anything that, that we're missing with these ideas? I don't think so. I mean, this is, this is very comprehensive. (laughs) It really is. This is, this is everything that I, that I could think of. Um, because I really, before I talked to you, I really didn't know where to start. Right. Right. Yeah. Be a lot. I feel like this, this, ornaments crafting is a good way in yeah to uh, to practice too because i'm new to this so yeah um, right very difficult you need to gain your your sea legs a little bit with it and i think you'll be a natural um but it, it right it just takes like the i would recommend always maybe asking one of your sisters to help out or someone else to help out with the tech of it so that you're not trying to teach and troubleshooting tech. So have somebody letting that people in, in the waiting room. And if somebody needs to share a picture and you can't figure it out, they're, they're on that because to, to teach and to be doing tech and to be troubleshooting, whatever else comes up, ends up as not great, a great workshop. Um, And you also may want to incorporate sound in it. So think about like, you know, like I think one thing that we often forget on these online experiences is that even though we're primarily using our hearing and our seeing uh, to interact with each other, we still have entire bodies, right? So like thinking about um, how music makes you feel, you know, if there's any way people want to move, um, if it's a Christmas workshop, like think about how to incorporate a little bit of Christmas music, um, something sensory suggesting that people have a snack with them have a drink have eggnog have milk and cookies like you know like what what invites the whole body experience into this so that it's actually a little bit more celebratory and a full-bodied than 
just kind of like having like bad posture and looking at the screen. <laughs> I love that, like a party. Yeah, make it, yeah, exactly. And we, we really need parties and we really haven't had parties. I mean, not all of us need parties. I need some parties. <laughs> Me like, too. Had, I had my, like my third 40th birthday party on Zoom last night with another friend turning 40. <laughs> I was like, this is nice, but this would be way nicer. We were all hanging out. <laughs> um, and the last thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll probably try to wind down, is just if you, if you do um, kind of what I'm talking about with, which with the ornaments, you may want to use something like Zoom or something kind of simple and something that you're already familiar with. If you do a course, uh, either, and I could, we could always email about this later or we could work together, but I would choose what we call LMSs, learning management systems, that are basically, <coughs> excuse me, platforms for learning. So you have ways to communicate with your students that don't require you to be interacting with their personal email addresses all the time. You have a way to host videos, you have a chat mechanism, you have the entire course experience all in one. They can post photos of their work in that, in that management system. And so you're not having to like have Pinterest and have Facebook group and have YouTube and like four things that nobody can keep track of. It's just all in one place and there would be a monthly fee. They're usually quite easy to use. I mean, you're in TV, you probably have a really good kind of visual sense of how these things work. So it would be more a matter of like, just figuring out the learning design of it, how somebody would start, where they would end, what their needs are, what your intentions are, what the learning process will really, really look like, and then figuring out how to create the media and the interact, design the interactions that will happen within that learning system, learning management system. Okay. That's One, for example, I mean, there's a million, but just so you know what I'm talking about, like Kajabi or mm. Teachable or Thinkific, or these are the, some of the most kind of common ones that are comprehensive in, in nature. Right. Okay, cool. Yeah. Got to so do that. that. Any, other, any other thoughts or questions? No. This is great. I'm really inspired. Good. I'm so glad. Thank you. I really, um, you know, you should do what you want, but I really want you to invite me to your ornament. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Even of course if it's just me and your sisters, I want to come. <laughs> no matter what, you better be there. Okay. Good. I got, I got very excited about this. I live with four children now with my own son, and we, we live in a, a com, like a communal situation that we moved into because of the pandemic. So I, I always, my, my way of, being with kids seems to be to do arts and crafts. So we have like a arts and crafts table with all the stuff around oh. all the time, but we could use a few new, new crafts. Oh, okay. Everyone bring everyone. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're like speaking my language because I love crafts. I also have a big craft table. Oh, see. And you're, <laughs> glitter you're, galore. <laughs> yes. I've actually avoided the glitter because the cleanup terrifies me with the children, but we'll get there. Maybe when they turn five. <laughs> well, thank you, Mary Clara. This has been really fun and I'm happy to follow up in any way. Of course, thank you so much, Leah. You're welcome. I will talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.